G'day, welcome to the Chicken Channel. Do you know what? We roast chicken all the time. We love it. And you always have leftover chicken. There's sandwiches, there's sandwiches, no, there's stacks of uses. But I thought what we might do is do a chicken pizza. The world loves a pizza. But I'm going Spanish. I'm um, going to do the pizza dough for you and put a Spanish flavour to the top. Here we go. Now the dough itself is rather important, but what I want to do is show you one that you can prepare straight away and use fairly quickly. A really good dough takes time to develop its flavour, but in this case, we want a pizza and we want it now. So in here, I have three cups of plain flour. The important thing about the plain flour is this, that it's a fine grade flour. And you can get the double O or the triple O, which is an Italian size grain, small grain, and that's important. To make a really quick one, three cups, I'm gonna put in a serious pinch of salt, equivalent to maybe half a teaspoon, because you want the dough to have some flavour. I'm going to use a level teaspoon of instant yeast. That's all we need. There's plenty of brands out there. Choose one that's an instant yeast and uh, make sure the date's fine because this is a living beast, right? What a life it's got. Isn't it amazing? You just add a bit of warmth and moisture and it just comes alive. But it's alive, make sure it's in date. Next thing, we have our water and we have some oil. Not everybody uses oil, but I don't mind a bit of flavour and it helps with the kneading as well. So all we do is add some water, give it a stir and start to form a bit of a dough ball. Okay, And always have some extra flour and water on hand. If it's too sticky, a bit more flour, too dry, a bit more water, simple as that. Now what you do is, you've seen it happen a million times. Right, you turn this into a dough ball and it's nice and round and tight, etc. And you can knead that away. We've done one earlier because you do need to put it aside and let it prove. And we've done that. And by proving, it'll just take two hours in a warm place. And this is nearly fully proved, but essentially it's taken on a lot more air, right? You see how soft that is? That's the air. So we just knock that back deflating and you can see the texture there it's fantastic now that is our pizza dough ready to go now it'll be better tomorrow and better the day after so always make more than you need and it freezes extremely well now as for the toppings again I want to go Spanish so earlier on I diced some chorizo and some potatoes now the potatoes were pre-cooked drop the whole potato into some water, bring it to the boil for 15 minutes, then take it out, let it come to room temperature. Dice the potato and the chorizo the same and toss them together in a pan with just a little bit of olive oil. I did exactly the same with some capsicum and onion. So just toss that with a little bit of olive oil and there we have it. And our wonderful shredded chicken meat. Now for the base, you want a tomato sugo style base, right? Which is normally an Italian style. And I've got some tomato puree here, but into that, just to make it more Spanish, I've got some Spanish smoked paprika. Right? It's one of the great ingredients that's used in the chorizo itself. So about a teaspoon sprinkled into this to give it that Spanish edge. Okay, well there are the components. What we need to do is clear some bench space because now we're about to roll. First thing we have to do is decide how big our pizza should be. So let's grab our dough and off with his head. Too small. Bit more. You'll get a feel for it. Plenty of flour, plain flour. And traditionally, a pizza is never rolled out using a rolling pin. It's all about the hands. But it's okay. I'll show you how to make it a bit authentic, even with a pin. Here we go. Rolling, rolling, plenty of flour. Roll and turn. Away you go. Do you know, let's talk about flour. I have some very special flour. Very little bit of it. It comes from Caputa, which is near Naples in Italy. And the flour is grown by a particular family. And it's like wine in that 
that region is somehow just perfect for a particular strain of wheat. High in protein and great in flavour. And that caputa flour is brilliant. So the quality of the flour is so important. The quality of the water, the yeast, and even the salt is so important to your final result. Always get the best. Right, now we've rolled away and then use your fingers to make it feel not rolled. That's all, because you want that sort of a look. What I'm going to do is use this. At home, a really good idea is to get a pizza stone and put it into your oven and heat the pizza stone up to about 200 degrees. Now those pizza stones will give a lot more heat from the base and a crispier base, but I'll use this because it's nice and easy. All right. To prevent things from sticking, a little bit of flour onto that and roll that out. Excess flour off the top, and time to place our toppings. Our Spanishified tomato base, not too much. Nobody likes a soggy pizza. Just enough to barely flavour it. And all the way around. Now what I like to do is actually drop this base in just with the tomato on to pre-cook it slightly. That just ensures that the centre gets a bit of cooking as well. Now for a bit of fun. Coming for a walk to the pizza oven? They're absolutely fantastic. But as I said before, you don't need one to make a good pizza at home. But let me just tell you why the pizza oven is so good. The pizza oven is good because there's a radiated heat. The fire heats the bricks and then the bricks cook the pizza. Now, radiated heat is a different heat to in the oven, which is you heat the air and the air cooks the pizza. You see what I mean? So it's different. So the results you get here for pizza are far better. Depending on the wood, depending on your oven, you just have to watch it. There's no times and temperatures here, right? The lower the heat, it takes a bit longer. But in a really hot oven, and this can get hotter, this pizza, a good pizza, should only take about two, maybe three minutes. So it's a real quick number. Traditionally, right, you just throw the pizza on the stone itself. Might do the next one like that. Pizzas are so popular these days, you can make your own. So as I said, we're going Spanish. First of all, a little bit, and not too much, we don't need too much topping. A little bit of our shredded chicken from a leftover roast. And I'm using my fingers, a mixture of our chorizo and potato. The capsicum and onion. And a good melting cheese. Now the melting cheese in this case, we're using a mozzarella. However, bocconcini, fontina, any of those great melting cheeses are fantastic. The cheese is going to help hold our topping on as well. Done. You know the drum. Back into the oven. And again, all you have to do is watch it, right? Twist it around if you need to. Watch it. Once the cheese melts, and it's starting to brown, your pizza's ready, provided the edges are starting to look a little bit darker as well. While that's cooking, let's make a little mayonnaise that'll go on top. This is just a whole egg mayonnaise. This is some crushed garlic, about one clove, and a little bit of lemon juice. Okay, stir that through, and we've got a really makeshift aioli. Perfect. Let's check the pizza. There we are. Could this possibly be the world's most popular food? We shall see. Well, a bit of a drizzle over the top with our little garlic mayonnaise. You know, I'd like to have this with a nice fresh salad. Whatever you've got going, there's rocket, there's fennel, cos lettuce, anything, all right? And I like chili. So as much chili as you can take. Cut into 17,000 pieces. There it is. Any style you want. Look at that. Beautiful dough. Crispy around the edge. Soft but not soggy in the middle. Chicken, Spanish style pizza. <laughs>